Today we're going to be multiplying polynomials. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot to cover today. Um, first thing we want to do a quick review of multiplying monomials. That's when you have a term like this, a monomial times another monomial. You multiply the numbers, 2 times negative 3, which gives you negative 6. And then you multiply the x times the x's and the y's times the y's. The x's and y's, when you're multiplying a variable like that, you just add the exponents. So in this case, x squared plus x will give you 3x's, and y times y gives you y squared. <coughs> the other thing that we need to understand before we can multiply polynomials times polynomials is multiplying a monomial, or a single term like this, times a polynomial, multiple terms. What you end up doing is you take that 4x, or anything outside the parentheses, and you multiply it times everything that is inside the parentheses. For a quick review on that, you can check out the lesson on multiplying monomials um, with polynomials. But what you end up doing is multiplying 4x times 2x, which will give you 8x squared, and 4x times 3, which gives you 12x. You have to have a basic grasp of these two concepts to be able to move on into multiplying polynomials, which is what we're going to be talking about today. All right. The most basic type of polynomial is called a binomial with two terms. All right. And when you're multiplying a binomial times a binomial, we're going to start out by taking the first term here, 2x, and we're going to multiply that times each term inside the second set of parentheses. So 2x times 3x. And then we separate it with addition, 2x times negative 2. The next thing we need to do is then take the second term inside the parentheses and multiply that times both terms inside the second set of parentheses. So it'll be 1 times 3x and 1 times negative 2. Then each time we multiply, we're going to separate by these addition symbols so that we know we're not just multiplying everything together, but we're multiplying two terms and then adding it to each other one. All right, when we do that, we'll join together our multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, x, um, because it had an x right there. 1 times 3x is 3x. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And for our final answer, what we can do when we're like this is we can get rid of these plus and minus, or plus and negative 2, and just change that to being minus 2 plus negative 4x, change it to negative 4x. In our final list, <laughs> the final list of all finalist steps, we have to join together any like terms. In this case, we have negative 4x and positive 3x. And we have two terms that have exactly the same variable. Those are called like terms, and you can join them together. Negative 4 plus 3 will leave us with negative 1x. It's just written as negative x. And then that is our final answer. The trick to this is making sure that you multiply every single term inside the first set of parentheses times every single term in the second set of parentheses. That's the key to multiplying polynomials. You have to know how to multiply monomials, and then you just apply that to these basic rules. Now, one type of um, multiplying of polynomials that throws people off a lot is this, when you see x plus 3 squared. The most common mistake is to just say x squared plus 9, all right, just to square each term inside the parentheses. But that's incorrect. What x plus 3 squared means is x plus 3 times x plus 3. So it's often helpful to write it out. And then remember, we're multiplying the first term times each term in the second set of parentheses, and then the second term times each term inside the parentheses. All right? And if we remember that, then we're going to end up with the right answer. If we just square both terms, that's going to be wrong. It's not going to work out for us. All right, so let's start out. x times x gives us x squared. x times 3 gives us 3x. X, or x, 3 times x gives us 3x. And 3 times 3 gives us 9. And so now we have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. We join like terms of 3x and 3x, and we'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Notice how that's different than just squaring the first term and squaring the second term. You would completely miss out on this plus 6x. All right? So 
you have to make sure whenever you see a set of parentheses squared like that or raised to the power of 3 or 4 or whatever, write it out and then multiply it out. All right. Now, <clears throat> this here may look an awful lot like a monomial, 2x, times a polynomial, and another monomial times that same polynomial. Trust me, you'll see this later on, and it will make a little bit more sense. When we're multiplying, just sort of a quick reminder, we multiply the monomial on the outside times every single term inside the parentheses. We do that both times, making sure that we keep it separated with our addition symbols. So let's do this. I'm going to do all six terms pretty quickly here. 2x times 3 is 6x squared. 2x times negative 4y will give us negative 8xy. 2x times 2 will give us positive 4x. Now I'm going to go to my second um, kind of function or you know, expression over here. 3x times 3x is 9x. 3x times four, negative 4y is negative 12xy and 3x times 2 is, is positive 6x. Notice I skipped the step of making this plus negative 12xy and plus negative 8xy. Once you get more comfortable with it, 2 times the negative 4y, you can just, instead of saying plus negative 8xy, you can just skip straight to the step of minus 8xy. And that's absolutely fine. In the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join all of the terms kind of close together. So if I have um, x squared, I'm going to put them close together, 6x squared and 9x squared. I'm going to put my um, xy's together. I've got negative 8xy and the negative 12xy. And then I'm going to leave my x's at the end, 4x and 6x. And then I'm going to join together any like terms. 6 and 9 is 15. Negative 8 and negative 12 will give me negative 20. And 4 plus 6 is 10. So that would be my final answer. Remember, x squared is different than x. Those are not like terms. We can't join them together. All right? So the variable needs to be exactly the same, or we cannot join them together. This is, in fact, our final answer. And it's in lowest, well, it's not, it's not factored, but it's our final answer in the correct form right there. All right. One last question that we're going to do. And this is a binomial, a polynomial with two terms, times a trinomial, a bi uh, polynomial with three terms. And what we're going to do with this one is that you can solve it in one of two ways. The first way is to write it out. Take the first term, 2a, and multiply that times the entire trinomial. See that? 2a times this trinomial, 4a plus 3b minus 17. Then you take the second term, 3b, and multiply that times the entire binomial or trinomial. All right, does this look familiar? This is exactly what we did in the last question. So what we were doing in the last question really was this exact type of question, only we skipped the first step. Try and keep it, you know, one step at a time. So you can solve them this way. What you would do with 2a is distribute it and multiply times each term inside the parentheses and then take 3b and multiply it times each term inside the parentheses. That's the first method. The second method would be to draw those arcs that I had before, only you'd have more of them. So you're taking 2a and you're multiplying it times each individual term, 3b times each individual term. Both of these methods are doing exactly the same thing. The key is that you have to multiply every term in the first set of parentheses times every single term inside of the second set of parentheses. So I'm going to use the drawing the arc method because for me it saves a little bit of time, it's fine. Um, so I'm going to multiply 2a times 4a which gives me 8a squared, 2a times 3b which gives me 6ab, and 2a times negative 17 which gives me negative 34a. I'm now going to focus on my second term, 3b and multiply that times each term inside the second set of parentheses, 3b times 4a, which is 12ab, 3b times 3b, which is 9b squared, and 3b times negative 17, which gives me negative 51b. I'm going to, in this next step, rearrange. Notice I've rearranged my massive polynomial here. I've rearranged it um, so that the largest exponent values are listed first. All right. This is the degree of the polynomial. The highest degree 
will stay here at um, the left, and the lowest degree will be at the end, the end on the right there. Also, by listing them in order, I can see really quickly if there are any like terms. We have 8a squared, 9b squared, not like terms. 6ab, 12ab, those are like terms. So you can see that the variable here is exactly the same for both terms. Then we also have negative 34a and negative 51b, both different variables. So the only like terms we have are 6ab and 12ab. So we'll join those together. 6 plus 12 is 18. And that would be the final answer for this massive multiplication question right there. All right. So that is how you multiply a polynomial times another polynomial. It takes a little bit of time. Definitely have to be organized and make sure you get every single one. And that is the key, making sure each term inside of this parenthesis is multiplied times every term inside of that one.